Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for the character you want to see next, and like and subscribe to flipper someone the bird next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Oswald Cobblepot, the Penguin, basically the anti-Batman. Both are born into wealth, but Oswald was abandoned by his parents rather than losing them. Both use their wealth on gadgets, but one uses them to defend Gotham, and the other uses it to steal from Gotham. Both have animal themes, but bats are flying mammals, and penguins are flightless birds. Maybe that makes Penguin a better nemesis than the Joker. Only way to find out is to make an R-rated Penguin movie where Danny DeVito eats garbage for two hours. My name is not Oswald! It's Penguin! I am not a human being! I am an animal! Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, utility umbrella. Batman has a belt, you have an umbrella. I guess that's why you wear suspenders. You can't wear a belt like Batman does. Next, we need to boss people around. Why get your flippery fingers dirty when you can just tell someone else to do it? Finally, we'll run for office with big charisma skills to get some serious political power in Gotham. For stats, we're using the standard point buy. We need some things very high and some things very low. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Dexterity, intelligence, and wisdom are high at 15. You're great at shooting people, scheming, and befriending circus animals. Strength, constitution, and charisma are down at 8. You grew up in a sewer, you don't do manual labor, and you usually lose fights in one punch. Penguin is a human. He's not a halfling or a dwarf just because he's short. Humans can be 4'10". I know this because he was played by Danny DeVito, a real human who is 4 foot 10 inches. Change it at home if you like, but I don't need to know about it. I don't walk into a restaurant's kitchen and tell them how I would have made the spaghetti. I just eat the spaghetti. Spaghetti. Humans get a feat like skill expert, letting you round up an ability score by one, like intelligence. You get another skill like deception and expertise in a skill like deception. I know we dumped charisma, but we're actually going to get a lot of charisma skills. Penguin is kind of an enigma. He has no social graces, but he's a master of manipulation. Bump your dexterity and your wisdom with your two free points. Take animal handling for your skill of choice and the noble background for history and persuasion. Also the retainer feature to have a thug who runs errands for you. We'll grab some thugs as quickly as possible as a rogue giving you four skills from the rogue list like investigation, perception, intimidation, and sleight of hand if those are the skills you want. I would want them, they're very penguin skills. You get expertise in two more skills like animal handling and persuasion. We won't be able to get dominate beast or animal friendship in this build, so we're just gonna get really high animal handling. There's also sneak attack, letting you add a d6 of extra damage to your ranged or finesse weapon attacks as long as you have advantage on the roll or an ally within five feet of the person you're shooting. Have some low level henchmen occupy the super sourpuss, then shoot them in the back. Second level rogues get cutting action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. Running doesn't seem like your thing, but you're short enough to hide pretty effectively. Third level rogues can choose a roguish archetype, and masterminds are the bossiest as a master of tactics. This lets you use the help action as a bonus action, and with a range of 30 feet, giving an ally an advantage on an attack roll or ability check. As a master of intrigue, you also get proficiency with disguise kits, forgery kits, and a set of gaming skills. Another key difference between you and Batman, Batman is not a gamer. You also get steady aim, letting you give yourself advantage on an attack roll as a bonus action as long as you haven't moved that turn. Might be worth it since you do have 2d6 sneak attack damage here. Fourth level rogues get an ability score improvement. We're going to start off with dexterity, since shooting people is a pretty effective way to deal with them. Penguins are famously adept marksmen. Fun penguin fact for you. Penguins are also excellent inventors, so we're going to jump to artificer, making you a magical tinkerer, putting tiny magical effects into tiny non-magical items. And that's a wind-up penguin toy with a puff of smoke, a little stink, or a message of 25 words or less. But you also get to murder people with cantrips like Firebolt, shooting a ranged spell attack that deals 2d10 fire damage on hit for an umbrella laser. Thorn Whip is a melee spell attack that deals 2d6 piercing damage and pulls a creature 10 feet closer to you with a 30 foot range for an umbrella grappling hook. For your first level spells, Feather Fall prevents up to 5 falling creatures from taking falling damage. You're mostly using it for yourself, opening the umbrella to fall like Mary Poppins. But you could also save Harvey, Harley, Hardies, Hargreaves, and Harriet the Spy. Lots of H names in your party, kind of weird. Sanctuary protects a creature for forcing anyone who would attack them to make a wisdom saving throw. If they fail, they have to attack another creature instead. This goes away if the creature makes an attack or casts a spell. Think of it as the diplomatic immunity spell. Batman can't punch a respectable politician until that politician bites his ear off. Second level artificers get infusion, special items that make you cooler than Batman. Enhanced arcane focus adds one to spell attack rolls from an arcane focused, and you can ignore up to half cover for better umbrella lasers. Repeating shot makes a weapon magical, adds one to the attack and damage 
modules and you never have to track ammo for it. I don't really know how one loads a bullet into an umbrella. I think the best solution is to never have to do it. Enhanced Weapon adds one to the attack and damage rolls of a weapon and makes it magical in terms of overcoming resistances if you'd rather make your umbrella a rapier and do some fencing. Finally, Sending Stones are two stones you can cast sending between little rocky talkies to communicate with your goons. They're probably shaped like little penguins to stay on theme. Third level artificers can choose a specialty. Artillerists get more options for a handheld gadget machine with an Eldritch Cannon. You can make it a Force Ballista that fires a ranged spell attack that deals 2d8 force damage and pushes creatures 5 feet back. You can make it a Flamethrower that forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures dealing 2d8 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. Those are the most penguiny umbrella options, but you can also make a Protector, giving creatures within 10 feet of it temporary HP equal to 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier. That would work for a little Umbrella Shield, though the Shield spell might work better, adding 5 to your AC as a reaction. Fourth level artificers get another ability score improvement. We're going to work on intelligence now to get your umbrella gadgets on par with your umbrella gun. Fifth level artillerists can make an arcane firearm, a spellcasting focus that adds an extra d8 of damage to one spell attack per round. It works great for cantrips like Firebolt or Thorn Whip, but also on spells like Scorching Ray, which you get for free as an artillerist. That fires three ranged spell attacks that deal 2d6 fire damage each. Only one gets the extra d8 of damage, but that's still some sweet umbrella laser. You can also grab your own spells like Web, filling a 20 foot cube with sticky webs, forcing a strength saving throw on creatures inside, and restraining those that fail. We could just use a net, you'd be proficient with nets, but I'd like this for a much bigger net to throw at the bat family. Pyrotechnics lets you make a flash bang that blinds creatures who fail a constitution saving throw, or a smoke cloud that heavily obscures the area. Penguin will regularly do both, but the smoke bomb is better in my opinion, since it lets you hide and has no save. Also, Penguin probably uses more smoke bombs than flashbangs. I don't want to run the math on that though. Maybe I'm wrong. Sixth level artificers get tool expertise, doubling your proficiency bonus with tools you're proficient with, thieves, tinkerers, and woodcarvers for you. That will help you make cooler gear like a spell refueling ring, letting you recover a spell slot of third level or lower once per day. Penguin doesn't use a lot of high level spells, he uses lower level spells creatively. Mind Sharpener lets you use a reaction to pass a concentration save you should have failed with a d4 worth of charges at dawn. Your concentration save is negative one, so that's going to happen pretty frequently. Seventh level artificers get Flash of Genius, letting you use your reaction to add your intelligence modifier to an ability check or saving throw of a creature within 30 feet of you, an amount of times per long rest equal to your intelligence modifier. With help as a bonus action and flash of genius as a reaction, you're actually a really great team player, as long as the team is only working for your benefit, of course. Eighth level artificers get another ability score improvement, cap off your intelligence to maximize your leadership abilities, and get another use of flash of genius every day. Ninth level artificers get third level spells, you get fireball for free as an artillerist, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius, dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail, have as much to those that succeed for a nice little penguin bomb. Tiny Servant turns a tiny object into a little helper. The stats are in Xanathar's Guide to Everything, but I think it has to look like a tiny mechanical penguin. Otherwise, I will arrest you. You also get Explosive Turret, adding a d8 of damage to the Force Ballista or Flamethrower options of your Eldritch Cannon, and you can make it explode, forcing a Dexterity saving throw on creatures within 20 feet of it, dealing 3d8 force damage to those that fail, have as much to those that succeed. I would just stick with the extra damage. Having consistent damage on your bonus action is much more worth it than a little AoE, especially Especially considering you get Fireball for a much better AoE at this level anyway. Tenth level artificers are magical item adepts, letting you attune up to four magical items at once, and you get two more options. Winged Boots will give you a flying speed of 30 feet for a minute at a time, four hours per day, so you're straight up never going to run out of that unless you try to fly over a mountain or something. Penguins are generally flightless birds, but that's because they don't have high-tech umbrellas. Cloak of Protection adds one to your AC in saving throws. It's a fancy little jacket. Penguins always look like they're wearing a fancy little jacket. Eleventh level artificers get spell storing item, letting you store a spell of second level or lower in an object or spell casting focus, casting that spell out of that object using your intelligence modifier an amount of times per day equal to double your intelligence modifier. That's a whole bunch of scorching rays or pyrotechnics or webs. I really like all those options for you, so pick what you want at home. Now, another ability score improvement would be nice, but remember how I said you're a master of low level spells? We need more low level spells, and we'll get them by jumping over to wizard. For cantrips, shocking grasp lets you make a melee spell attack against a creature dealing 3d8 lightning damage or 4d8 with your arcane firearm and it prevents the target from taking reactions letting you use your cunning action to dash away acid splash forces a dexterity saving throw on two creatures within five feet of each other dealing 3d6 acid damage to those that fail that will hit two faces sorry harvey light creates a light for you to see in the dark with your bad human eyes for first level spells sleep will get you some knockout gas putting 5d8 worth of hp to sleep starting with the lowest hp creature and moving up from there fog cloud creates a 20 foot radius of heavily obscuring fog if you want the smoke bomb of pyrotechnics with a smaller spell slot. Grease makes an oil slick in a 10-foot square, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures inside, 
knocking them prone if they fail, and turning the area into difficult terrain. Charm Person forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they're charmed by you for an hour, giving you advantage on charisma checks with them, so you can kiss the palms and grease the babies. Tasha's Caustic Brew forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 30-foot line, covering those that fail in acid that deals 2d4 acid damage at the start of each of their turns until they use an action to wipe it off. It can eventually do a little more damage than Acid Splash, it just takes a minute, depending on your concentration. Second level wizards can choose a school. The School of Abjuration will give you an Arcane Ward, a little force field that soaks up your intelligence modifier plus double your wizard level and refreshes when you cast an Abjuration spell of first level or lower. So now your Umbrella can shield to raise your AC, but also just absorb damage for you automatically as well. For this level spell, Alarm puts a warning on an opening of a threshold that lets you know when someone crosses it. Doesn't matter how sneaky Batman is, you'll know if he's infiltrating your penguin cave. Do penguins live in caves? Sometimes. Sometimes they do. Cause fear lets you freak people out, forcing a wisdom saving throw on a creature and frightening them if they fail. Picture this. You jump into the ring. You start eating garbage. Third level wizards can learn second level spells. Hold person is like a better version of web against one creature, at least one humanoid specifically. It forces a wisdom saving throw on them. Failing that, they're paralyzed for up to a minute depending on your concentration. That means automatic critical hits within five feet of them, automatically failed dexterity saves, and strength saves for things like fireball or your sneak attack. It can be a nasty little combo to wrap someone up, then bombard them. Knock breaks a lock off its hinges, but it also makes a very loud noise. Turns out breaking into a vault isn't always a delicate thing. Fourth level wizards get our last ability score improvement, cap off your dexterity modifier to shoot guns as good as you shoot umbrella lasers. For this level spell, suggestion forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they have to complete a simple task you give them for eight hours that isn't directly harmful to them. Kidnapping children isn't directly harmful. It sounds pretty hard to pitch as reasonable though. Cloud of Daggers forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 5 foot cube, dealing 4d4 slashing damage to those that fail. All of the daggers stay there for a minute depending on your concentration. It's just a volley of sharp things shooting out of your umbrella. Our capstone is the 5th level of wizard for 2 more 3rd level spells. Hypnotic Pattern forces a wisdom saving throw on creatures in a 30 foot cube, failing that they're charmed and incapacitated with a 0 movement speed for up to a minute depending on your concentration, making it much easier to rob the bank after you spin your umbrella like a little hypnotic thingy. Glyph of Warning puts a trap on a surface or object that activates when a condition you place on it happens. The standard option is an explosive rune, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius. Failing that, they take 5d8 acid, cold, fire, lightning, poison, or thunder damage, but you can also store another spell inside if you would rather make a fireball, because that deals more damage. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're just the worst, with a bunch of spells to trap, bamboozle, and to irritate your foes. You also have a lot of skills, with expertise in three of them, to get plenty done through roleplay. Finally, you're a tactical master with Flash of Genius and the ability to help as a bonus action, making any party you're a team of perform their best. For weaknesses, you have around 78 HP depending on how you roll, which means pretty much anyone who can hit you is going to kill you very fast. You're also susceptible to grapples with no strength whatsoever and no acrobatic skill to break out either. Finally, with all of your concentration spells, a negative one to concentration saves is pretty terrible. So that's why you just tell other people what to do. Hang in the back, take cheap shots, and show everyone why Penguin is really the GOAT. Just watch out for another mastermind who would steal your crew. Whether or not you're able to handle things yourself is an easy riddle to answer. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for the character you want to see next, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.